What's up today? I'm going to show you how to update the firmware on your Canon camera. In this case, I'm doing it on my Canon R6. This will work for the R5, the R6, the R, the RP, the 90D, and in, even in this case, my 80D, which I've had for a few years now. Same stuff, same software. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Now, there's two different ways that you could do this. You could actually take the memory card out of the camera, like so and insert it into your computer. So you could use one of these memory card readers if you don't have one built into your computer already. And then in that case, all you need to do is transfer the firmware over from your desktop to the memory card, which make sure to format it beforehand. You can actually do that in the camera. So I'll show you how to do that. And then um, you can install it inside the camera itself. But the way I'll be doing it is actually keeping the memory card in the camera and I'll format it beforehand and then I'm going to connect the camera to the computer with this USB cable. So let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is go to Google or DuckDuckGo and type in Canon R6 drivers or whatever you're using yourself. Now I know that the new drivers for this camera are 1.1.1 but all you have to do is click on drivers and downloads and then down here you'll see firmware so click on that and you'll see that here is version 1.1.1 for Windows. There's also a version for Mac OS X if that's what you're on and the download is about 49 to 50 megabytes. So you click select and you actually have to say that you agree to the terms and conditions and then you click download. Now Google Chrome is already trying to block this download for some reason it says it can't be downloaded securely but I'm just going to click on the down arrow and select keep and there we go. We are now in the zip file but I don't want to be in the zip file. I actually want to extract the zip file. So I'm in my downloads folder where it downloaded to. I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to click on 7-zip. Now I'm going to click on extract files. What it's going to do is make a folder with the same name but it's not zipped anymore. Double click on that. Now you'll see here's the actual firmware file. It's a .fir and you can actually read the instructions yourself. There's an update procedure PDF that comes with the download in several different languages but we don't need that because that's why I'm here. Now if you're using method one all you need to do is insert that SD card into your computer and then transfer it over but like I said you want to format the card no matter what if you'd use the computer method um, via USB or if you use the SD card method uh, you're going to want to format the card so I'll show you how to do that. On the back of the camera you're going to hit the menu button and it'll bring you to the menus. Um, as you can see there's a bunch of sub menus. Um, we're going to go all the way to this wrench and then to screen number one in that wrench menu and you can see there's a format card. Now in my camera there's two different SD card slots so I select one and then I'm going to keep low level format selected and hit OK and it will format the card. Now make sure all your photos and videos are backed up before you format your card and now we can go on. Go ahead and connect your camera to the computer. I'm using a USB-A to USB-C cable. I have a USB-C to USB-C cable but for some reason it's been giving me problems. Sometimes it'll transfer files and sometimes it just cuts out in the middle. So I have this connected and I'm going to switch it on. Now you can see the EOS utility has loaded up and instead of clicking my usual download image as a computer I'm going to go down here to camera settings. Now before you do anything else you want to make sure that you're switched to P mode on the camera. Now you'll see there's an option for firmware update. Go ahead and click on that and it tells you what the current firmware of your camera is. So it says 1.1.0, continue, click next, then it will tell you to go and download the firmware update file. So I already have that. I'm gonna browse for that, which is in my downloads and go to here and here and here's my firmware file. So I click open, then next. Now it's gonna update to 1.1.1, click next. Now once the computer has transferred the firmware file to the SD card on the camera, the computer tells you to now operate your camera and you're gonna go ahead and select the newest firmware. So click that and go ahead to OK and click the set button. All right, so now it's updating and it gives you the warning to not turn off the camera. Now make sure your battery is totally full when you do this because you don't want it to die or else you might be screwed. This is always nerve wracking to do because you might brick the device. I mean, you probably won't, but it's always a possibility if anything goes wrong throughout this entire process. I'm hoping that this new firmware version uh, helps with the overheating issues that people have been having. I noticed that the camera started to overheat. I had it in 4K mode 
and the camera was on for about an hour and then I started getting the overheat warning and that was just with 1.1.0. Supposedly 1.1.1 kind of fixes that. So some people are speculating that Canon's going to make good on their overheating problems. We'll see if that really happens, but I'm hoping that this is a step in the right direction because I do love this camera, even though the video mode doesn't shoot all eye mode, which is generally preferred by uh, videographers. You know, most people don't shoot raw. Um, you can, and that is definitely the best way to shoot if you really need all the information in the video file. And this Canon R6 only shoots IPB mode, which is unfortunate, but even compared to the EOS R, the IPB mode on this is better than the all I mode on the R, so I'm really not too upset about it. We'll see if it becomes an issue when I go to start color grading stuff, but let's take a look at this, and now we're at 37%, so this obviously takes a few minutes. Maybe the second half will go faster. Sometimes initializing it is the slow part, so we seem to be going up pretty steadily. We're at 46%, and uh, yeah, so now it's just a waiting game. There we go, big jump from 50s to the 60s. While this is updating, I just want to say I've had this camera for a couple weeks now and the photos are incredible. It's only 20 megapixels, so that might turn a lot of people off if you're more of a stills kind of person. Personally, I'd be okay with less megapixels and better low light performance. The low light performance seems to be awesome on this camera, don't get me wrong, but obviously the Sony a7S III is like a whole nother animal with its 11 megapixel sensor giant pixels that can pick up tons of light. Now, I'm not sleeping on this camera and I cannot wait to use it. And obviously I love my Canon glass. I think that they have great color science. Um, this is the 24-70 f2.8 RF lens and it is awesome. Although there is some dust that got into the end of this, which is kind of irritating because it's supposed to be an L glass that is, you know, weather sealed-ish. So, the fact that there's dust in there when I've been babying this thing since I've had it is quite irritating, but it doesn't affect the image quality. So this is finished. We can go ahead and confirm that 1.1.1 has been updated. Click OK. And now it's in USB mode. I've turned the camera back on. I'm going to go back into the menus and go all the way to the fifth one in the yellow submenu. And at the bottom it says firmware. 1.1.1 so there we go you can also see the lens firmware so that's it i hope you found this video to be helpful and happy shooting